right, if you have your Bibles with you tonight, turn to with me to uh, Luke chapter 18. Be the first of two different scriptures we'll read tonight, both in the New Testament. Uh, Luke chapter 18, and we'll read verse 1. Of course, when you find that, if you'll please stand with us as we honor the reading of God's Word. Luke 18, 1. Luke 18, 1. If you have it, say amen. amen. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen. Now, if you'll turn with me, please, to Hebrews chapter 10, and we'll read 35 through 39. Hebrews 10, 35 through 39. Hebrews chapter 10, 35 through 39, starting in verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Uh, Lord, we thank you uh, tonight for your word and for the awesome uh, conduit of prayer that we have that takes us straight into your presence, Lord. We don't have to go into a box. We don't have to go... Uh, to a priest, we don't have to go to anybody except for you, Lord. And I pray that you would help us never to take that uh, for granted, Lord. Such a, a great and precious thing to be able to come into your presence anytime we need to, Lord. Even though you already know what it is that we're going to tell you. Thank you tonight for your word. Bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes the day seems long, our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair. But Christ will soon appear to catch his bride away. All tears forever. trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Life's day soon be o'er, all storms forever past, we'll cross the great divide, to glory safe at last, we'll share the joys of heaven, a harp, a home, a crown, the tempter will Life's 
trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Christ like you should. But we're living in the home of the brave, right? One of our struggles with faith has to do with timing. Faith, prayer, one of our struggles with, that we struggle with, and if you're a believer, you're going to struggle. We all struggle. Some other, you know, less than others. Some more visible than others. But it has to do with timing. Now, follow me. We believe God will keep his promises, right? But when? But when is he going to keep his promise? When is he going to answer our prayer? That's the problem. And uh, some of us are weaker than others, and the, the fear gets in pretty easy. Um, and I think we all have fear. Um, the difference between, you know, uh, uh, some people is just, you know, if you have fear, you saddle up anyway and you go. That's just what you got to do. Uh, we begin to be less and less confident that God has even hurt us because of the timing. Um, who, who in here has prayed for years about something? Yeah, sure, most people do. Um, but our belief, our, uh, you know, our confidence in God that he even hears us fades as time, time goes on. Um, it, and we ignore the fact that God has never let us down before. Never. And he never will. Well, we ignore that fact as we just, uh, you know, we've got to have it tomorrow. We've got to have it yesterday. And this is the way God's got to do it. God ain't got to do anything, my friend. Right. How many moms or dads or sons or daughters have you prayed uh, that you're, you know, how, 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 many, how many of you have prayed for your sons, your daughters, your your relatives, your families had to be saved, and you prayed for years. Some of you just raised your hand. I prayed for my dad for many years to be saved. Uh, we prayed for our kids to be saved when they were born. Okay, Even when they were in the womb, we prayed for that. Um, so, And then they get saved after many years of you praying, right? So God answers prayers. He can answer your prayer in five minutes, and he can answer it in five years. It's his, it's his uh, timing. It's his uh, will be done. Um, do you still pray? Do you still believe God answers prayer? Do you believe he's still listening? I voted for uh, Camellia, whatever. <laughs> Chameleon, Chameleon, that's a good name for her. What we should know and learn, but what we rarely do, 
is we need to realize that the Lord's ways are not like our ways. The Lord has ways of doing, doing things that we know uh, not of, not a lot of, that we know not of. We don't know his way. Our brains are not big enough to know his ways. Uh, our brains were made just to follow his ways, not to know his ways. Okay? Uh, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. And I'm just really what I'm trying to do is encourage you and me is that God's not behind time. He's right on time. Amen. With your prayers, my prayers, or anybody's prayers. He, he's always the same yesterday, today, and forever. So as, as times get rougher and rougher and eat more evil sets in the world, and uh, God does not change, okay? In fact, he, in fact, you ought to get closer to him as the time draws nigh. Um, one of the best illustrations of how God does things is found in the story of Zacharias and Elizabeth, uh, who Elizabeth was barren. <clears throat> they were both old people. They prayed for a child for many years, even before they were old. And uh, Zechariah was an old priest. And uh, he was, uh, you know, he'd take care of the temple. I guess most of what they did um, cleaned up and got ready for the sacrifices and all that stuff. Uh, his wife, who was Elizabeth, was barren. So that means she couldn't have kids, okay? Um, I asked my wife while I was doing this message, is, is, is that what menopause is when you can't have kids? Is that what that is, lady? What is, what is, uh, what do they call it when you don't have kids? No, menopause. That's what I just asked you. It's a menopause. You guys are stinking nuttier than I am. So anyway, his wife, Elizabeth, was barren. She couldn't have kids. And he was working one day in the temple, maybe cleaning up, maybe getting ready for something. An angel appeared unto this old man, this old priest. And he says, don't be afraid, Zach. Don't be afraid. Boy, there's a line right there, don't be afraid. Easier said than done. He said, don't be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. And let me tell you tonight, don't be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. Amen. I promise you, either that or God's a liar. And I know he's not a liar. <clears throat> you will have a son, the angel says, and we will call him John the Baptist. John the Baptist, the greatest man ever to walk planet Earth. And what was, why, why? Because he was the greatest messenger ever. He was called to, to deliver the greatest message ever. Behold, the Lamb of God, everybody. There he, there's your door to heaven right there. You better take it. There it is. That's your, last, that's your only chance. The way, the truth, and the life. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And that's why God called him the greatest to ever walk planet Earth. He preached Jesus, and he was, he was uh, uh, you know, he, he was all business. And anybody that eats grasshoppers and honey, it's all business. Amen? Uh, maybe Cindy eats, I don't know what you, do you eat grasshoppers? Are they plant-based? No, they're not. Uh, <clears throat> well, let's, let's look at some observations, then we'll go to Big Bibbs Barbecue and Shannon's Bind. Amen. All right. He said he was, okay? God makes what we think are very odd choices. Yes, sir. What we think, what we think are odd choices. Um, you know, when you get to heaven, are you going to ask God any questions? Like, why did you make the cockroach? Or why did you make the praying mantis? That thing is weird looking, right? 
I dare any man, if I was to throw a pr praying mantis on your chest, you would freak out. <laughs> I would. That thing goes weird looking. Why did he make lice? Why did he make bed bugs? Why did he make, you know, uh, it makes some odd choices. Uh, there's always, there's probably a purpose, I imagine. Uh, if you were God in heaven looking down on earth and you could choose the set of parents that you would have birth, the most important man in the world, would you have chose Zacharias and Elizabeth? Two old people. And she's barren on top of that? No. You probably we would have we would have chose Brad Pitt and whatever her name is. Uh, uh, you know, we would have Elvis Presley and what was his wife's name? Priscilla, yeah. We would have chose the perfect couple. Um, but that's not God. That's not how God works. And, and the way you think he answers prayer is not how he works. You got to think about that when you're expecting an answer for prayer. God doesn't look at the thing, look, uh, look at things like we. He's looking at when he's going to answer your prayer, how he's going to answer your prayer, what kind of effect is. You know, he's looking at everything about your life uh, as far as answering this, this request that you have made. How he's going to answer it, um, you know, we, we just want it done. We want it, okay? We want it this way. We want it wrapped this way. We want it look at this way, looking this way, smelling this way. We want it the way we want it. Okay? We, and the fact, but the, the problem is we don't know what's good for us. So what does God do? He looks all over Israel and he finds an old woman to birth the greatest man that's ever walked planet earth besides the Lord Jesus himself. An old lady who can't have a baby. And God makes an odd choice, but out of that odd choice, John the Baptist is born. <clears throat> what, I, what I got, now you might get something different, but what I got out of God's choice it was simply this. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are, are possible. All things are possible. There is nothing impossible with God. Um, I mean, look around you. Look right down here. Roy, who's asleep on me. Okay, because he's worked hard all day, but he's in church. I mean, that's a miracle. Nothing is impossible. Okay, if you'd have told him 20 years ago he'd be sitting in church on a Wednesday night, he said, no way, but nothing is impossible. Right. Look at Tony, a stinking crack addict. Still is. No. You look, at, look around you, nothing is impossible. Jorge. Okay, Bonnie and Clyde. In prison, year, uh, what, a year ago? No, uh, years ago. In pri that's where they met, in prison. You know, most churches wouldn't let them be a work for them, you know. Uh, but that's all we got, prisons around here, so we're going to have it. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Larry and Christine, nothing is impossible. Go over to the B service and the C service. You'll say nothing. You'll see people. That's what, nothing is impossible with God. That's his biggest uh, thing is, is with people. Is that Navy flag crooked? Look at that thing. Is that down? Yes, it sure is. Tony, take your time when you do this stuff. Do it right. You guys that have battled alcohol, and God delivered you from alcohol. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen? Uh, number two. Many times in life, God want, waits while a situation goes from bad to worse. 
section. I have no idea what that, that is, but uh, nothing is impossible with God, and when things do hit the fan, okay, sometimes it goes, God makes it go from bad to worse. Think about Joseph. Joseph, if you think it was bad, his brothers tried to murder him. They threw him in a ditch and left him. And then he got sold into slavery, and then he went to jail, and then he, and then Pot, or Potiphar's wife lied about him. He went to jail, and then he did something for, I think it was the baker, and the baker forgot about him and uh, left him in jail for another two years, okay? And then uh, uh, it finally ended up, uh, you know, God was in it. Of course he was in it. He saved the nation of Israel. Uh, but things might go from, Bad to worse, but don't give up on God. He's, he's, still, he's still involved in your life because you're his child, okay? This is all about prayer. But sometimes we want prayer. Uh, we think faith, you know, uh, faith runs on a different clock. It just, God has a different uh, timing than we do, okay? Um, number three, what time does Big Bibs close? You better go down there and start. Yeah. What seems like emergencies in our lives is actually God setting us up. God sets us up. I think I preached a whole message on that years ago, or I don't know. Maybe it was months ago. Maybe it was yesterday. I don't know. But it was a long time ago, I think. But God, that's what faith is. God setting us up. That's why he wants us to live by faith. He puts us in adverse situations to see what we're going to do. And call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and thou shalt glorify me. Call unto me in the day of trouble. Okay, and I'll get the glory. I'll get the glory. That's what God said. Okay? So that's what the whole situation about living down here on earth is, living by faith, is so God will get the glory through your life. You think you can wait a couple years after you pray for the answer you want? Yeah, you think you can wait a year, a month, two weeks? Don't worry about it. After you pray, leave it, and leave it with God. Leave it with God. That's the only thing you can do, and that's the only thing you should do. Um, God sets us up. <clears throat> Number four, notice God is drawn to prayer. The thing about when you pray is don't take it lightly because that's, God inhabits the praises of his people, uh, the prayers of his people. When you're, when you're calling on God, when you're, when you're, you know, you're, you're recognizing him in your life, uh, then, hey, he encamps, he tents, he sets up his tent. That's what that actually means. I don't think God sleeps in a tent. He might. We don't see it. Uh, but he, he inhabits. He's close to you. He's in that area. So the more you pray, the, the, the more God is in your life. Don't take prayer lightly. Prayer is everything. Amen. Prayer is communication with God. It's asking. Don't you like it when your kids ask? Okay, and instead of just taking? Like, you know, I'd appreciate it if you asked for candy instead of coming to my office and taking handfuls and putting your pocket. I'll keep buying it and giving it out. I'll keep, I just buy the candy and keep a bag in my truck, to be honest with you. But since you pigs have eaten all my candy, I've got to buy two or three bags of candy. And I think Lenny's the guilty one. Yeah, he, not lately, okay? And it, your candy's still leaving there, okay? I'm not talking about you people take one or so, one or two. I'm talking about... You people who put handfuls in your pocket. <laughs> I'm not mentioning any names, and I wouldn't look at anybody. <laughs> but, no. <laughs> God's looking to demonstrate his power, Amen. to demonstrate his goodness and love towards you, through answered prayer, through your faith. Uh, so he can show his power to the next generation. Our kids, these kids got to see God work. 
Your kids have to see God answer your prayer, mom and dad. They need to see that. Why should they pray? Why should they pray? Marty, if your kids don't see, well, they're grown, aren't they? Are they no, David still lives in. But your kids, when they were little, they should have seen you and Mel there pray. My kids should have seen me and Julie pray and get answers to prayer. That's what, hey, I mean, that's what they want to see. They want to see that God's real. That's why we need to have people saved and baptized on a regular basis. They need to see work going on. They need to see a bunch of busy bees. They need to see friendly people shaking each other's hands, friendly people bringing people to church, strangers to church, and shaking their hands. They need to see that's what church is all about. People loving people and caring about people. God wants to demonstrate his power. You think he demonstrated with Moses when Moses' back was turned against the Red Sea? Yeah. You think God answered Moses' prayer? Yeah, sometimes right in the nick of time, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, we could stand up here all night. Noah, no steering device on the ark. He just started floating, okay? And that was dangerous. He could have hit mountains, could have hit hills and everything else under the water, but he didn't because God was the captain of the ship. Three Hebrew children, go on and on. The Apostle Paul, you know, he... He went through beatings, he went through shipwrecks, he went through um, jail, you name it. But he came out in the end smelling like a rose because he believed God in prayer. He prayed in jail, he prayed while he was preaching, he prayed while good times, bad times. He just, he just kept going, kept going. Trust God, man. Believe. Notice God is drawn to prayer. When you pray, okay, God is going to be there, I promise you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. Don't tell me you're searching for him with all your heart and you don't pray on a regular basis. That's seeking God. This is just basic stuff on prayer that we're going to cover, okay, and, and before we get to the meat of the subject of prayer. And, you know, that's, prayer is, is, is for me, it's the main thing. It's the main thing. If I had to choose between prayer and the Bible, it would definitely be prayer. Because I can memorize the Bible even if I don't have one. Amen? Amen. <laughs> yeah. If somebody said, you can't pray, okay? I mean, what would you do? What would you do? You got to be able to pray. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. You're, you, you, you talking to God. What a lonely life, people that don't pray. Okay. So, Right here, let us draw near near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance. Be assured God is listening when you draw nigh. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And the whole multitude of people were praying without at the time of incense, okay? Everybody outside of the temple was praying when the angel appeared. You'll find in the Bible to Zechariah when he was in the temple. There was a whole group of people, the Bible emphasizes that, that were praying. You'll find in the Bible that when times of prayer, things happen. Things happen. When they were in the upper room, they were praying. When the Holy Spirit showed up, right? Amen. Um, don't give up on prayer. Uh, God can show up anytime he wants, but he, he, chose, he chooses to show up when folks begin to pray. Right? I think, oh, I put this up here. Yeah. And when they had prayed, 
the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. That all, we'll just start with prayer. Prayer. You, you, you're dead on your feet without prayer. You're dead. You're the walking dead is what you are. You're all puffed up with what you think is spirituality, but if you're prayerless, you're nothing. You're a hollow soul, hollow soul. Did you pray today? Don't answer the question. Did you pray today? Did you pray this morning? The first thing I do before is I start talking to God when I get up. There might be a few moans and groans in between, all right, but I start talking to God. Make it a habit. You got to make it a habit. I quote, uh, I guess it's 20 or so scriptures before I even get into prayer. Get the word of God in your mind and in your heart, okay? And if you quote those scriptures for long enough, you'll have those down and then get you another list of scriptures. And then pretty soon you'll have dozens and dozens of scriptures you can just quote to God. Uh, boy, that's the best thing. That's the best way to pray to God, quote, quote him scripture. Amen. He likes his own word, amen. That's the purest of us all, of them all. That's the purest words there are, not your words, his. <clears throat> the first thing you ought to do is thank him for saving your soul. Amen. And then maybe you want to quote some scripture to him and then get into your prayer list or whatever you have or however you pray. We'll get into that too. Um, some and help you out in prayer. And I'm not an expert on it, uh, but I do pray. But the angel of the Lord said unto, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. For thy prayer is heard. Isn't that a blessing? And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son, and that shall call his name John. Amen? He said, Your prayer is heard. Don't worry, your prayer is heard. Obviously, their prayer for years was for Elizabeth to have a child. Okay? Don't give up on prayer. Don't give up on having a baby, ladies. Okay, uh, My daughter, the doctor said over and over she couldn't have a baby. We just, we just kept praying. Guess Amen. what? And she, Her and Jeremy kept praying. They prayed and prayed and prayed. And guess what? <coughs> Amen. Daughter. Come on. They need to start praying themselves. Amen. A lot of folks prayed, 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 and prayed. And you can give, stand up and give a testimony how God has answered your prayer, how you prayed for years. And God answered. Um, stay on your knees. God will answer you in his way, in his time. Just trust him. That's why you're praying to him. You believe he's the God of the universe, don't you? That he has everything in his hand, in his palm of his hand. So, can't you believe? Do you believe he saved your soul? You ask him to save you. You believe he saved you? Yeah. Well, believe he can answer your other prayers too. I know you're tasting barbecue, aren't you? Only fear the Lord and serve him with truth with all your heart, for consider how great things he has done for you. When I was baptized the first time, time in Santa Barbara when I was 12. Yeah, Carpinteria when I was 12. Uh, they gave me this little Bible. And on the front of it was this verse, only fear the Lord and serve him with truth with all your heart for consider what great things he has done for you. That's like Ecclesiastes. That's about says it all right there. Only fear the Lord. Hey, look up here. Only fear the Lord. Only fear the Lord and serve him with truth. For don't you ever consider the things he has done for you? The fact that he had let you walk in from your car to the church. Do you know how many electrical impulses from your brain to your legs had to happen for you to walk out of your car to sit in your seat? And God's in control of every one of them. You need to stop and slow down, get off your iPhone every once in a while, and think of things like that. Remember, God is drawn 
the prayer. God doesn't like second guessing. And I second guess a lot, I do. He doesn't like that. I gotta catch myself. Stop it. Don't second guess God. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. Second guessing God. And you can't blame him. We do the same, we do the same thing. These people in the Bible don't. Don't start preaching against them, okay? We, we can, yeah, there are illustrations for right and wrong, but put yourself in that situation. So um, he questioned God's ability, and that's what God's trying to teach us here. Um, God shut his mouth, too, for doing that. For nine months, he zipped his lips, okay? The, but, well, he, you know, oh, we're going to have this baby. We're going to name him Zacharias, aren't we? Yeah. We're going to name him Zachariah. No, no, no. Zip. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, you know, this wasn't a bad guy. He wasn't a bad He was a priest. He just doubted God a little bit. Do you think you're any different when you doubt God, that God thinks any different? It's a big deal with God because God's all about belief and faith and prayer. It's all about him. Um, you know, God made sure he couldn't question him for nine months. Be careful about second-guessing God. God doesn't have to explain what and how and why he does anything. God told him that you're going to have a, he told him you're going to have a baby. And that's it. Now go. Okay. So Jesus said, He'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. You believe that, don't you? Okay. Then believe him in prayer. Believe he's answered you. Believe it and go. Go, go witness. Go pass out some tracts after you pray. All right. The great battle of our spiritual lives is will you believe? It is not will you try harder. It is will you believe? Will you believe? Do you believe? <clears throat> what must I do to be saved? Well, come down off that. You know, we'll, we'll go out and we'll start soul winning. I'll get you in church, Mr. Jailer. No, he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul said. Believe. Believe, and thou shalt be saved. And thy house got, you know, his whole family got saved. <clears throat> Number six. Oh, are we? All right, and that's it. Acts 16. And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Ephesians 2, For by grace you saved through faith, and that of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Doubting him never pleases him. And we do it all the time. At least I do. We doubt if this is going to happen. We doubt if that's going to happen. We doubt if uh, Trump was going to be elected. We doubt this. We doubt that. Okay, but God had grace. Now our, our, our country can prosper for four years. If he lives that long, if they don't take him out before he takes office. It's an evil world, man. We live in. It's a real deal. This is, not, this is not, not candy lanes. This is not, you know, some game. But God shows mercy and shows grace upon a nation that murders babies. Not going to go on forever. Not going to last forever. Because I don't see this country ever, you know, ever taking uh, abortion away completely. I don't see it happen. Of course, I never see, I never, I never believe Roe versus Wade would be overturned either. Hello? That's why he's one of the greatest presidents ever. He did that and he moved, he moved the capital of, of Israel to Jerusalem. I mean, you can sit up here and name all kinds of stuff. Amen? Amen. Pray for him. Pray for him. And millions of us did. Maybe that's why he got elected. You think? Uh, never doubt God. Never doubt God. Uh, and it's hard to do because we're such people of, we want our timing and things. 
We want it done in our time. Um, never pleases God when you doubt him. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It's impossible. You can't please God without faith. You can't please God without believing him in prayer. Prayer is a very important thing. Very, 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 very important. Um, we get in trouble when we take our eyes off Jesus and we focus on the situation that we're going through. Remember that movie or that show, Father Knows Best? Are you old enough? Well, God knows best. Your heavenly Father knows best. Just believe. Just believe. If thou would have just, if thou would just believe. Jesus said, take ye away the stone, Martha. The sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he speaketh, for he has been dead for days. Jesus said unto him, said, I, uh, I not unto thee that, that thou would believe thou shouldest see the glory of God. God? God might not let you see the glory, his glory, unless you believe. You believe your dad's going to get saved? You believe your mom can get saved? Well, if you don't believe that, you won't see it happen. You won't see the glory of God. You've got to believe it. I believe it. I believe God. Uh, sometimes I catch myself doubting, you know, and I want it, I want it answered right now. Um, you believe Jesus to save you, you can believe him to, to, to control your life. Okay, that's all I got. But I want to leave you with this with this verse that we already covered. Only fear the Lord and serve him with truth. For consider uh, with all your heart, consider what great things God has done for you. That is a powerful verse. And I have known that verse for a long, long time. Ever since I was 12 years old. I used I had that little Bible for a long, long time. I don't know what happened to it. Wish I'd still have it. But they put that on the front of it. Keith, only fear the Lord. Only fear the Lord. Don't worry about anything else. Only fear the Lord. Through prayer, that, that should only be done through prayer. Okay. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, thank you for being a God. Of